Hi, this is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. I guess you can see from the previous video that I was at a church talking to a small group of people dealing with the book of Ruth. Now the book of Ruth is jam-packed with all kind of goodies and hidden gems that will really help us navigate through life. And I want you to hear some of the details of the story. Number one, we all know how difficult it is to lose someone we love. The first thing that Naomi lost was her husband. He died. She had to deal with that loss. Now she's a widow. So you know income had to have been quite limited. But thanks to her sons and her daughter-in-laws, she had a support mechanism until 10 years later when both sons died. Now she has nobody. Most people would say, well, you have your daughters-in-law, but nine times out of 10, they go back to their own kin. Well, in this case, one went back, one chose, begged and chose to stay. That was Ruth. Now, we pretty much know the story, but some of you who aren't that acquainted with the Bible just may not. Now, this is a story of God's provisional uh, plan. It's a plan of promotion. It's a plan of blessing, a plan of prosperity. And it doesn't look like it because all they see in front of them is loss, death, mourning, less of provision. They're doing without. They are now having to find a place to stay. They are being displaced and moved to another location totally. And the difficult part is <laughs> this whole thing is based on loss. The experience of loss, the mourning of loss, the pain of loss, the inconvenience of loss, the stigma of loss. I mean, loss can really wreak havoc in our lives. However, there is another thing called God's divine plan in your life and mine. God had another plan in these women's lives. And it wasn't a plan for them to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Even though life had subtracted and subtracted and subtracted, God was adding, adding, adding. Because see, God works in paradoxes. While visually it looks like a thing, it, it, you know, when you deal with logic, uh, two minus one leaves one. Well, see, with God's math, two minus one might equal a thousand. That's how crazy God works in our lives. And when you look at the end result, how this whole thing came down to after they went through the heartache and the trial and the adjustments and the following of instruction, the giving of instruction, the obeying, the fears, the, all of that. What ends up happening is they end up in a better situation than they started with first thing God starts showing them is favor. They have favor with their kinsman who is Boaz. He instructs all of his people to allow them to glean so that Ruth can go out and glean now, but she doesn't just glean like the rest. When he finds out she's his kinswoman, he instructs everybody to leave way more than they normally would leave, to allow her to glean in areas where most are not allowed to glean. So she comes back plentifully. She is loaded with goodies. 
they're not hurting at all. Because see, Boaz he got it going on. So he makes sure that she has more than enough. And when she goes back and Naomi sees how abundantly she's been blessed, she questions her. And when she tells her she was at, uh, at the uh, the land of Boaz, you know, Boaz's uh, crops and all of that, she tells her, stay there. And so does Boaz. He instructs her to stay there. So now she's got the favor of God. I mean, she's just, she's making out like a fat rat when in all, for all intents and purposes, she should be suffering from not having enough in her condition, in her situation. But her loss ends up being her gain because that's the way God works. Now, she's not complaining. She wants to stay close to Naomi, to Naomi's people, in Naomi's country, serving Naomi's God. Even though she doesn't know Naomi's God, she wants to serve him. Now, here she is in a good place emotionally, even though she's going through mourning, she's keeping it positive. And Naomi, even though she's bitter, is proactive in being a blessing, even though she doesn't feel that blessed right now. She is, instead of internalizing her self-pity, she is now focused on her daughter-in-law and how she can be a blessing to her. When you focus on someone else's needs, it takes your mind off of me, myself, and I. And instead of being self-centered, selfish, and caught up in you, you end up getting caught up in being a blessing to someone else. And it makes your life that much more meaningful because then you're not sitting on the ground wallowing in self-pity, doing nothing, being about nothing, but your own sorrow and grief. No, now she's focused her attention on being a blessing to this young lady and making a change in her life even though she can't see a change happening for herself. So, God blesses them both because they're both coming from a good place in their hearts toward each other. And as God's plan plays out, Boaz finds out he can marry Ruth. And they have a child. Now, I already told the story in the message but see, what we don't get is when I said in the video, your attitude determines your altitude. Had both of those women been just bickering and complaining and mad at God and mad at each other and fussing and fuming, and they wouldn't have gotten where they are. Their attitude gave them favor with God and man. When you live a life in bitter, bitter anger, and nasty attitude, and you're spiteful, and you're malicious, and you're backbiting. And God will not bless mess. So you have to be careful where you are. And when life happens, what's inside of you will come out. Sometimes it can actually be a beautiful thing. And for some of you, nobody wants to be around when you go through. Because you spew your stuff all over everybody who's within your reach. And you know it and so do they. All right, now moving right along. How greatly did they get blessed? Number one. She, the, um, Naomi and Ruth always had more than enough. Number two, Ruth 
obeyed every single word Naomi told her. Some of you will not take anyone else's advice because in your mind you know it all. You can't tell me nothing. I lived too long. I don't need you telling me what to do. Well, that in and of itself will short circuit your blessing and sometimes cancel it out because you will not humble yourself to the degree where God can guide and lead you to your blessing because you're going to make your own way. You pulled your own, yourself up by your own bootstraps. You've been doing it all your life. You're going to do it now. You think it worked for you, but you have no idea how many blessings you null and voided by doing it your way. All right. Here's another thing you got to look at. Here Naomi thought it was the end for her. She's just going to help Ruth and then she'll go pine away somewhere. No. God said no. Because you were a blessing with abundance. I'm going to bless you with abundance. So he promoted her in a way she never expected. Her great great grandson ended up being King David. King David. Royalty. Royalty. Now, her grandson that she got to take care of, she got to mother and nurture and baby and oh, pour her love into, was the grandfather of King David. Now, when was the last time you got a promotion like that? Here you are going down a slippery slope. As far as you can see it, you're just sliding down into oblivion, into nowhere but heartache. And God is saying, you have no idea how high I'm moving you. See, if you don't get moved high uh, circumstantially like they did, guess what? If you keep that right attitude, you stay in prayer, you stay close to God while you're slipping down that slippery slope. Trust God with your very being, with everything about you. Trust God. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Yes, he will. Now, if you keep that attitude, you keep that faith all along the way, and you trust in God through the tears. You trust in God through the years. You trust in God through the fears. You trust in God through it all. Then what ends up happening is the first thing, characteristically, people see your growth, your maturity, your moving from glory to glory, from strength to strength from ordinary to beautiful and people see it all over you from weak to strong just they see it all over you and you start to win people's favor and you start to win their trust and they look up to you and you end up being that matriarch that they go to for counsel they go to for wisdom because they trust because of the way you've come through, they trust you. So, even when it looks like you're going down, one way or another, baby, God is moving you up to the God side of his plan and his scheme of things. And your life will get better and better. God bless you. As you stay the course, the race is not given to the swift, to the quick, to the strong. No, the race is given to them that endure till the end. Endure and stay faithful. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. God bless you.